you when I first when I posted about this this podcast I started, you basically texted me and you were like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my daughter. Like we definitely got to talk. And that is really powerful. Like that's a really powerful thing. And the idea of like, you know, your daughter being like, good night, daddy. And like, you know, blowing you a kiss. It's like, that's, that's like what movies are made of. Like, that's like such like a a heart filling moment. Right. And I'm curious, like, what, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Like you, you text me saying, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my daughter. What's that mean? Tell me that story. So, and we talked about this a little bit, but so just so everybody knows, back in 2019, the company I was working for went out of business. And me and my girl, we basically lost everything. Like she has money saved, but like I ended up moving in with her brother and we in this like 10 by 10 room. She's pregnant. Um, she couldn't work because she was, you know, more in sickness literally every day, except for maybe one month out of that whole nine. Um, had no job for six weeks. Like I said, we had no money. And for me, I'm not used to that. Like being an athlete in college, as soon as I finish, I got a personal training job and you know, my career in CrossFit, I did that along with trying to start a gym and some other things. So I've always worked in, you know, whether I made a little bit of money or paycheck to paycheck, like I, at least I was working. So going at six weeks, it was more of a, like it mess, messes with your mind because that's all I've known and it's like stripped away and I'm in this city like I'm from Fort Myers and moved across state for that company so now I know nobody me and my girl we have a baby on the way I have no friends in the town nothing like that it was scary and you know you you kind of get stuck where you don't you don't know what to do because you have literally no options um but she ended up knowing somebody that uh got me a security job in downtown Melbourne so I did security and then one of the guys I met through the last company had a roofing uh company where they laid uh clay tiles and I've never done either one of those jobs in my life so I was like you know I put my pride and ego aside like I have a daughter on the way and the lifestyle I grew up in she will not see that period and uh and I just went to work and like I told you I was getting four uh, three, four hours of sleep, drinking four or five bang energy drinks a day, uh, eating k- cold canned chili on the roof during our breaks, like, and did that for a three month period. Uh, and I actually reached out to, uh, one of my, one of the guys I met at the last company, he used to come get meals, bodybuilder guy, and which is a good friend now. Um, but I asked him, he was in pharmaceutical sales and I asked him like, how do you get into it? Cause I, I didn't even know it was a thing like being an athlete based on my entire life, like personal training is all I knew. Uh, so he basically told me he went to enterprise, got his management and sales skills up. And then the company had, uh, he ended up leaving for, they recruited a moderate there uh, in the pharmaceuticals. He's been doing it about seven, eight years now. So I it just so happened that somebody left enterprise and I ended up applying for that same job job and uh, land in a position. So I was at Enterprise still doing the roofing and the bouncing at night uh, till like three, four in the morning. And just for me, knowing like, like I said, what I went through as a kid and seeing like my parents got divorced. Um, and I talk about this in other interviews, like when I was young, about five, six years old, I was molested. Like I was abused. My dad, he was, you know, I love him to death, but like the, the way he disciplined us was overboard. Um, at 13, I tried to commit suicide because of all the depression and stuff I was going through. So I've been through a lot of traumas when I was a kid and the environment that I was in, like I told myself before I even ever, like before I knew she was on the way and, and like always, I, I would never have my daughter or son, my child go through what I went through. So you know, every night I would just focus on just the process. Like I'm here for a reason and I just need to just stay focused for her. And I mean, every night coming home to my girl, like seeing her, you know, sick and, and, you know, stomach getting bigger and bigger, like it's just more sense of urgency. Like I got to keep trying to make things happen. And uh, a pharmaceutical company, the last job I worked for, they reached out out of nowhere. And I went through, uh, it was four interviews, landed the job. And literally I went from making like 2,400 between a month, between three jobs 
to making six figures in a pharmaceutical job. And I've never made six figures in my life. So you can imagine, like my girl, I still remember that to this day when my old boss called me, we were in the living room and I put it on speaker and she was like, she was like, hey, Jeff, I just got off the phone with our district manager and he loves, love, uh, loves what you're all about. And we're going to offer you a position. And I remember her screaming and started crying because of all the stuff that we went through the, like to get to that point. And it was like I said, it, it all came down to like staying focused for my daughter because like like that's how I am now. Like I'm constantly pushing for more and more because I need her to experience so much more than I did.